What is going on guys? Evan Shanks here with finally another video. Um, today's going to be something a little bit different, not a vlog or anything like that, but uh, I actually have the privilege to show you guys something uh, pretty cool. Um, and I'll go ahead and cut straight to it. Um, because of the, the guys uh, down in Cobb, Austin, uh, not Plano, Austin, um, Cobb and Austin, I have the privilege of uh, showing you guys, boom, this little guy right here, except it's focused on me, so it's more back here. I have the privilege of showing you guys how to uh, install and uh, actually take ProTune maps from your Access Port V2 over to your Access Port V3. So, if you're planning on upgrading anytime soon or you're just kind of wondering if you should, well, I might clear up some thoughts for you. So, I hope that I'm able to help you out in that way. So yeah, what I was saying was what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step process on uh, how to uninstall the V2. Um, and to get everything off of your V2 onto your V3 if you have a Pro Tune. Um, if you only use the off the shelf tunes, well, I do suggest you get a Pro Tune uh, as soon as you can. Um, but in the meantime, if you're just using off the shelf tunes, you can continue to use the OTS that the V3 has to offer for you. But first things first, I do want to show you guys what's in the package, uh, just so you guys can know, just so you can be sure. Yeah, this isn't a box of spiders that's about to jump out at you. This is this is an access port. So, oh hey, what's up, dude? Um, so first thing is you have a little waiver that says, oh hey, congratulations, your access port's finally here. One thing that it does say on it is uh, is how to get your access port manager on your computer. That is essential to what I'm about to show you. You have to have an access port manager and it works for PC and also works for OS X. I'm a Mac person because I do a lot of video editing and I use it for work. So that's that. But aside from that, um, I'm going to show you guys what the heck is else in the package. So aside from stickers, you know, there's some stickers, some mounts and stuff like that, but the main thing is you're going to have the beautiful access port. And uh, let's go ahead and unzip this. Mm-hmm, <laughs> sexy. And then, oh, hey. Oh, yeah. So you have your Subaru Quick Start Guide. So if you guys, I don't know if y'all can see this very well, but uh, this is basically just a Quick Start Guide uh, to help you guys who are literally just buying it for the first time um, and are installing it to your car. It just kind of shows you how to go through things. Um, pretty simple stuff. You get this lovely sheet of styrofoam. I don't suggest you chew on it. It probably would make you sick. Um, but you have a upside down access port strate strategically placed by Evan Shanks. Uh, and it's not actually upside down. I just put it there for some reason. It normally has a little, uh, I guess, a little screen shield on it, but I already took it off. I've already been farting around with it. As you would expect, you get a new toy in the mail and obviously you're going to start playing around with it. So you get that, and then you also, in the package, you get uh, you get a mounting device, which is already in my car, go figure. Um, then you also get uh, your USB, your micro USB interface cable. This is not the same as your V2. Your V2 uses a mini USB, so you will need to switch between cables when you're messing with your computer. And, let's see, um... Right here, you, if you have a blue brew, uh, for those of you with blue brews, you can have the blue case on it. I want red, so I'm probably going to custom make my own red. I think they actually make cases, though. I'm not sure on that one, actually. But, and then aside from that, you have one more little box, little bag box. It's not a bag, it's a box. It's uh, accessories. Um, and this is going to be your Obi-Wan Kenobi sensor. I don't know why I said that. It's your OBD2 uh, sensor, and that goes into your OBD port and uh, that goes into the bottom of your access port. So it's no longer just a, a USB cable. It's, it's, it's a pretty much it's like a proprietary iPhone type thing, but it's very cool. It's a lot thicker, a lot, heavy du a lot heavier duty, um, and I would assume this would probably hide and you could probably lay this in crevices easier. So now that I've showed you what's inside the box, I want to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to start letting you know exactly how the process goes. I'm going to show you guys, uh, we're going to move on over to my computer and I'll show you guys exactly what you do um, to uninstall your V2 and to move on to your V3. Alright, and now we're going to be at the part where uh, the computer has to be uh, doing all the work. So, just to clarify, at this specific stage, at this specific point in time, um, your V2 is still married to your SC, to your Subaru. Um, you have not yet uninstalled it. This is still, V2 is still installed on your Subaru. The V3 is still just 
a, a useless pile of junk at this point in time. <laughs> um, so anyways, so what you're going to do, first things first, um, you're going to download, and I can put the link in the description, you're going to download the Access Port Manager. You need to have this. It looks like this. It's basically this little, these three, these four buttons right here um, in an application type thing. So anyways, and again, like I said, you can do this on PC uh, or Mac. I'm doing this on a Mac. But uh, what you're going to do, first things first, you plug your V2 into your computer. So easy as that. You take this old connection. Again, like I said, the older one uses a mini USB, at least mine does, and uh, your new V3 will use a micro. So it's two completely different connections. So what you're going to do is, as you can see, at this point in time, I have connected my old access port to my computer and it's going to end up reading it. You'll have to give it a second. Um, it'll end up shooting up and now you can see it has detected my access port. Um, now, one thing I will say before I show you guys how to do this next step, your Protune, if you have a Protune on your access port, your Protune is locked to this specific serial number on this access port. In order to do that, um, whenever you're partaking in the exchange program um, from V2 to V3 with Cobb, you have to let them know your serial number because they have the tools internally to where they can give you an unlock key on this specific um, V3 that they send you. So you have to let them know or take a picture of or whatever. You have to let Cobb know your serial number before you do that so that you can get your Protune unlocked and put to your new V3. Um, so anyways, that being said, here's what you're going to do. Right here, I know you guys can't see it very well, but right here you see a list of just a few things. I've got uh, a few different customized maps. This is actually previous prior to uh, my rebuild. This one right here, Evan Shanks 09 or 08 STI tune, um, is going to be the map that I am saving to my V3. All these other ones are just junk old tunes that I can't use because you have to utilize them with stock air filter, everything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my Pro Tune. You have to go to your Pro Tune. I'm going to go over here and click Save. Save selected files, or you can hit Command or Control S, but you hit Save. When you hit save, it's going to bring up a saving option. Um, when you do that, it's going to save it. You choose anywhere in your computer to save it, but it's like a normal file, so you save it in a folder that you're going to remember. I've already done this step, so I just felt like I needed to show you guys on how to do that. As soon as you do that, you're good to unplug this from your computer. As soon as you hit eject AP, access port, from right there, you hit eject access port, boom, it goes back to the monitor screen, you're golden. So you no longer need to have your V2 plugged into your computer at this point. Your next step is going to be uh, plug this beautiful mess into your computer. So you're going to take, you're going to utilize your new micro USB cable, and you're going to plug it into the USB port, and then you're going to plug it into the micro USB slot right here on the side. And that's the wrong way. I'm dumb. Here we go. So here we go. Let's go ahead and, oh, what am I even doing? What am I doing right now? Okay. So very cool screen. Wow, this looks a lot better than the V2. Oh my goodness. And I have actually already loaded my ProTune onto this one, but I will still show you how. Uh, what you're going to do when you plug this one in, um, after again, you have to let them know to, to have them transfer serial numbers. Um, what you're going to do at this point is you're going to go to this little button right here on the bottom and you're going to hit import files or command I on mine. It probably is control I. You're going to hit command import. Um, what you're going to do is when you do that, you're going to find that specific file that you saved. Mine's under AP Maps. Mine's Evan Shanks All-Wheel Drive Tuning Tune. Um, and that's that. All you have to do is then it'll go onto there and then you have your Pro Tune. So that's literally that's all you have to do it's it's very simple um, it's just you have to remember where you save the stuff and you just have to do that step by step 
and uh, you have to execute that correctly. But it's not difficult to do, as you guys can see. Um, the next step does not involve a computer, and that's going to be it as far as using the Access Port Manager. However, the Access Port Manager is nice because if there are any firmware updates, you can update it through there, and you can basically it's just hassle-free. So now I will show you the next step, which involves unmarrying or uninstalling your V2 from your car. And just so you guys can see, it's still plugged in. It now prompts to it now prompts you. Oh, let me get this in focus. It now actually prompts you to install it. So it says, "Hey, I need to install." So plug me into a car, dang it. So yeah. Anyways, let's move on. So the next steps are fairly easy, as you guys can, you might be able to see right here, I've already got my uh, mounting device that they throw in with the box with you. But uh, I, as you can see, I kind of have a lot of wires just chilling here. Um, that's a lot of stuff. So first things first, or I guess, well technically I'm on the fourth step, so fourth things fourth. Anyways, your next step is to uninstall, I don't know why I couldn't think of that word, uninstall your V2 access port and the way you do that is you plug this into your OB1 Kenobi sensor which is or OB Now that my fat, stupid butt got my keys, it says verify that ignition is in the on position. So what you're going to do is obviously you're going to turn your car on. And I'm going to shut you up and turn you off because there you go. It is initializing. It is flashing data to go back to the factory tune. And it says do not turn off vehicle or unplug device. And it is moving very slowly. This is like trying to download something onto your hard drive using McDonald's Wi-Fi. That's what this is like right now. Yeah, I'm at 5%, so um, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit just for you guys' entertainment purposes. It is successfully uninstalled and my car just freaked out, which is perfectly fine. Huh, that's funny. So to successfully uninstall it, you turn the ignition key off and then hit OK. And now my car is um, like stupid. So basically I probably wouldn't even be able to turn my car on at this point. So anyways, next step after you uninstall your V2 is, well, here comes the fun part. You get to install your new toy, which if you guys are new to the access port system and you don't have a previous one, this is also going to show you how to install it. So let me go find my OBD2, OB1 Kenobi. There we go. I'm plugged into OB1 Kenobi. And voila. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this this bad boy, plug it in, and boom. It's gonna say Cobb all over the place. That's pretty cute. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, what you do now is you install this, after you install it, then you reflash the car to the specific tune, and I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. So I just selected install, it was the only prompt on the screen, and all you have to do is hit the big button, so if I have to explain that to you, well, we've got a problem. Now, turn the ignition on, and watch it fly.
And then now it's actually going to give me a prompt that says, please confirm that your vehicle matches the identification results. And that is actually due to the serial number on the back of this access port. So it actually has recognized my vehicle already. I hit continue. And awesome. So literally before I even choose this, I have a little menu right here, and I'll show you that in a second, that uh, allows me to, I don't even have to go to any reflashing options. It's actually asking me um, what mode I want to flash my uh, ECU in. So I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. Oh, this hurts my belly, my fat belly. So here we go right there. You can kind of see it. There's a bunch of tunes I can choose from. Go up, you go down, everything like that. But that o Evan Shanks O8 STI tune is what I'm going to choose. And focus on my armpit. That's how it's done. So now it's actually gave me a little warning that said, warning, um, this may drain your battery, so don't worry about that. Um, it's not a big deal. My battery hasn't been on for five minutes. Um, and this is loading a lot faster than the McDonald's Wi-Fi that we had on this old access port to uninstall it. But literally, as soon as this is installed, I should be able to start it up, no problem, and continue to use this. So I will go ahead and skip ahead till this thing gets 100%, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so just hit 100%. It says, please wait. Oh, uh-oh. Do not. Okay, now it's doing another update. Oh, now it's flashing the ECU. So... My bad. The first one was installing, now it's flashing the ECU. So again, I'm going to go ahead and load the tune on here, and then I'll, I'll fast forward it so you guys can, you know, not be bored, you know. <laughs> Alright. Now my car is making weird noises, which normally is a good sign. Installation successful. Please turn the ignition key to the off position to complete. So I'm going to turn off my battery, hit continue, and... Boom. That is it. So, now that that is done, I can use it to monitor. Now, I know a lot of you guys probably have the question, Evan, if you already have a boost gauge and air-to-fuel wideband, why do you need this? Well, it's a management system, um, but it's not only that. It can troubleshoot anything, and, and my, well, my tune, my ProTune is locked to this guy. Um, I didn't use an open source. It's, it was tuned to this. Um, and also, just because... It's a good truck. And also just because lights look pretty in your car, and it's another thing to get stolen. Um, not really. So, but anyways, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, you've got a gauges option, performance option, troubleshooting, tune, everything like that. So, and I actually can make a separate video explaining to you guys the differences um, and the different parts of the access port. But for speedy purposes, I'm going to go ahead and cut that off there because, well, now I have officially done my job doing this. Um, and one thing, if you guys were curious, I'm going to tuck the wires away later, but if you guys were curious, um, this little mount right here is really cool because it's magnetic and uh, the access port has a magnetic backing to it. So all you have to do literally is just clamp it right there and it's like stuck for life. So it ain't going nowhere. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and worry about tucking these dang wires away and then um, I can be awesome again. Alright guys, so that will conclude this video. Um, that only took me about 20 minutes time with carrying camera equipment around and running upstairs because I forgot my keys. So it really doesn't take very long, it's not very hard, and I hope that uh, that step-by-step -step process really helped you guys out um, in either installing your new V3 or um, just aiding your curiosity uh, for buying a new one. Um, the last step to this process, however, um, if you are upgrading from a V2 to a V3, is um, whenever you do get your access port, uh, they will ship you a uh, return address. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to ship them back your V2, um, and they are going to do their copy things with it, um, and you actually get a 50% rebate on getting the new V3. So that's pretty awesome. Um, that's cool of them that they do that. So. Um, if you want to get 50% of your money back after you do buy it, well, there you go. You can you can get 50% of it back um, just by giving them an access port that you're never going to use ever again, um, unless you you know feel like giving it to a friend, which who does that because it's freaking expensive. But anyways, I, I do want to give a huge thank you to Marshall and Matt um, down in Austin, Cobb Tuning in Austin, um, for giving me this opportunity to do this. Um, and just to clarify something right quick, I know a lot of you guys may be confused why I'm making a video for Cobb, etc., etc. The video I had made in the past, um, 
I had no intention of bashing Cobb as a company. I meant Cobb Tuning in Plano had given me a bad customer experience, and other people understand that. Most people will understand that. I had a bad experience. They didn't give me a very good customer experience. It, it, that's not a big deal. I mean, you walk into Best Buy, you walk into Walmart, you get bad experiences every day. But, so anyways, that being said, I, I strongly support Cobb as a company because, well, quite honestly, uh, the access port has changed the game for a lot of tuners. Um, the fact that you have an engine management system in your hand that you can pretty much change settings of your car at any time um, is is very is very awesome. Um, the way they innovate um, in the car community, especially with Subarus, Mazdas, just four-cylinder stuff, it, it's very cool because they make very good products. And you know, for the most part, they have great customer service. Um, and I had great service uh, from Cobb and Austin. They actually reached out to me. And uh, uh, it was just, it, I, I, it kind of redeemed my, my faith in Cobb. But again, um, I don't hate Cobb as a company. I, I never intended to say that. And I know a lot of you guys got irritated or mad that I, I might have come across that way. I didn't mean that whatsoever. Cobb is a great company. I have nothing against them. I just, one location doesn't dictate my entire view for the company. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Um, and if you guys are curious with anything else going on in my life, you can always uh, follow me on Instagram because I post a lot more on there than I do on here um, because it's a lot easier taking a picture with a phone, maybe editing it for a few seconds. It's, it's a lot easier than uh, making a 20-minute video. So, um, But I, I do I thank you guys so incredibly much, and thank you to the guys down in Cobb in Austin, Texas, um, for, for giving me this opportunity. Um, it's, it's been awesome, and I'm glad I was able to make this video for you. Um, I hope you liked it. If you have any more questions, feel free to let me know. Like I said, I will put the links in the description for you guys to, to do all the access port managers and everything like that just to make it a little bit easier on you if you do get the V3 access port. Um, if you have any more questions uh, regarding the access port or anything else like that, please feel free uh, to leave a comment below. Um, or above to the side, whatever YouTube, Google decides to do in the future because, you know, they, they, they like to be weird and, uh, you know, they like to be Google. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys tuning in, subscribing, and everything like that. If you want to be awesome, which I know everybody does, hit the subscribe button because if you don't, well, you may actually die. So I would hit the subscribe button, stay subscribed, watch my stuff when I upload them because I have a life and I do stuff. Anyways, peace. Thanks for watching.